in the world we live in these days, it can be challenging to find good, clean, family-friendly movies to enjoy with your kids. But one studio that is very focused on doing this is Sorbo Studios. Joining us today from Florida, it's actually Kevin Sorbo. Many of you will recognize Kevin from the hugely popular Hercules TV series from the late 90s. And of course, God's Not Dead, those films. And their latest movie is called Miracle in East Texas. And before we chat with Kevin, let's take a little peek at that trailer. So this is Texas. Very flat. I just believe the hand of Providence has been guiding our every step. We're gonna hit oil right here on your plate. Doc Boyd and Daddy. While they weren't much good at actually finding or drilling for oil, they both possessed an unusual facility for convincing people that they could do just that. Oil! I've never felt it so strong in all my life! Widows were the mother's milk of the petroleum hustle. Love is not time's fool. And now that they had a well, it was time to hit every widow they could find in a three-county radius. This well, we can't bring it in. We've already sold close to 500%. Yeah, so? You can only have 100% of anything. I just wanted to be square with you because I care for you, ma'am. Give you back the thousand dollars I took. That you swindled from other widows. I don't want you here. I want you out of my house. We gotta take what we got and get it as far away from Texas as we can get. You want me to walk away from it? We're crooks. We've conned all those old ladies. Yeah, we conned those old ladies because that's what we do. I'm an oil man. <laughs> He's talking about you. True hand to God miracle is what it is. That's the gospel truth. Leave the rest up to Jesus! God's own bounty. Oil. Black gold. Amen. Amen. Ooh, the drama. Miracle in East Texas premieres in Canada Friday, November 3rd. And for those of you in the Lethbridge area, it's playing at Movie Mill. So we now welcome Kevin Sorbo to Bridge City News. Thanks so much for joining us today, Kevin. Great to have you on. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm sorry my wife couldn't be here. She's actually with one of your Canadians, Jordan Peterson, in London right now at a convention. So there you go. I got invited too, but I'm holding down the fort. Well, so there you have. thank have. you. I'm so glad that you're here to talk to me today. So, Kevin, this movie was actually filmed in Canada in the Calgary area, right? So parts of it at Heritage Park, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Most of it was shot. There was a ranch, a working ranch outside uh, that's west of uh, Calgary. And uh, I remember I showed this movie to a, a gr group of oil guys in Texas. And afterwards, they did a QA. and a And one of the guys raised his hand and said, hey, I know where you shot that. And I said, no, you don't. <laughs> I said, we shot it in Canada. They went, what? And I said, well, it's no, called gotcha. show business, not show show. So, um, you know, Canada, you get, you get like a 30 35% tax credit. You know, we, I lived in Vancouver. My second series after Hercules was Andromeda, Gene Roddenberry series. We shot for five years up in Vancouver. So I know the whole thing about, you know, Hollywood North, they always call it down in L.A. And this, uh, this is uh, the ranch we used was the same ranch Clint Eastwood used for Unforgiven. Uh, Kevin Costner shot, shot Open Ranger. So if it's good enough for those guys, it's certainly good enough for me. But it was uh, it was a great location. And, and we had a lot amazing local cast. And we had uh, John Ratzenberger's in this movie, Lou Gossett Jr., Tyler Maine, um, who's a Canadian wrestler, by the way. And he's Sabretooth in all the X-Men movies. And uh, my wife is in it as well. It's a it's a wonderful PG rated movie where the whole family can go, and it's a true story as well. Okay, well, with that said, tell us a little bit about what it's about. And you said it was a true story. So how was that inspired by this true story? Well, in 1930, right in the heart of the depression in America, um, there was two two con men, and I played by myself and John Ratzenberger. And these guys would go from, um, in Oklahoma, Texas, go from town to town. They would woo widows out of their money on fake oil wells. 
and they would sell 500% of the shares wherever they went. Well, you can only have 100% of anything, but they really ripped people off. And then they would they got to Kilgore, Texas. They accidentally strike oil. It ends up being the largest oil find in the history of the world. So it's called Miracle in Texas, obviously, because they found oil when they weren't looking for it. But it's the miracles that happen afterwards when they get arrested. Of course, they get arrested because, you, like I said, you can't have 500% of anything. And every widow they ripped off shows up the court trial to uh, watch these guys hang. But it's a wonderful story about faith and hope. Hope and love and redemption and laughter. And uh, it's a wonderful movie. We just had a run here in America and was very well received. And now we're heading up uh, to the North Country up there, which I know very well, not only living in uh, Vancouver, but I've shot a lot of movies in Toronto and Winnipeg, but lived in Minnesota, which is a, probably our most Canadian state because we start hockey at two years old as well. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, you're, you're talking about uh, scamming widows. And unfortunately, it's like, it's like modern day. I mean, this stuff still goes on, except now they're calling it catfish, catfishing, right? <laughs> yep, it's true. But you know, you wouldn't these like what they got away with. You would never get away with today okay. because you know just because of the internet and everything else. Yep. But uh, at that time, they were they were able to get away. But it was um, it's it's a wonderful true story. It's a lot of laughs. It's won ten film festivals. Everything from best comedy to best faith movie to best. Um, family movie, best judge movie. So I like the fact they can't really pigeonhole it because it's got a little bit of something for everyone, but it's a great movie. And I recommend after the movie, do not leave. You got to watch the closing credits because the bloopers are the bloopers are hilarious. Oh, okay. Well, I can't wait to see it now. How long ago was the Alberta Portion film? We were trying to think back and it seemed like it was around 2018. Does that sound about right? Um, that, no, 20, 20, 2018, 2019, right in there. It was we were we were set to go in 2020, then COVID hit, and uh, it put everything on hold for two years. So we waited until now, when we knew theaters would really be gearing up and going again. And uh, it's like I said, we were we were so set to go. We were going to open on 1,200 screens here in America, oh, and then uh, obviously every movie theater shut down around the world, basically right. with the. COVID fear factor, of course, exactly. but um, it's a, it's, it's a, you know, like I said, it's a time piece movie, so it doesn't age at all. Good and uh, it's just, yeah, so it's just, people will love it. It's just, it's a good, fun family movie. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, you and your wife, Sam, have been married for 25 years, right? And you have kids. So how much influence kids. does Hollywood have on, on our children, on your children? And do you think that the films that you're producing are making a difference, maybe. Well, I, I know they're making a difference. See, the difference is Hollywood is winning the culture war. They got the money. They got, you know, they do three hundred million dollar budget movies. They have a hundred million dollar advertising budget. So you see their see their trailer in every football game, every sitcom. It's just out there. Um, we do movies. You know, I do movies in the three million dollar range. That's catering budget and Pirates of the Caribbean, by the way. So. Yeah. <laughs> We got to fight against that. We got to rely on word of mouth. You mentioned God's Not Dead. God's Not Dead was a $2 million movie, made $140 million. I mean, that movie was all spread because of the people. People spread word of mouth. We need to get these movies out there that have a, a better effect. They're more positive. These are movies Hollywood used to make. And Hollywood just doesn't do it anymore. You look at the woke culture, which is insanity to me. If you look at what's going on at Disney, Disney is going to lose over $1 billion this year. It's not a very good business plan if you're a stockholder. I think I'd sell my stock. But they want to keep doing this stuff that people are just going, okay, enough of this stuff. I think, I think the silent majority, which I've heard about for decades, is finally waking up a little bit. But we need more people to wake up and say enough is enough and not being afraid to being attacked by, you know, the media or Hollywood or whatever or you know, our, our politicians, I mean, I think your government's just as screwed up as our government is here. So um, we got we got to fight against that. And the, hopefully movies like this do make a difference. And I get to the Sorbo Studio site. Um, I get emails all the time from people just saying how much they love the movies and how much they uh, they're great to have positive influences. So please go to SorboStudios.com, SorboStudios.com. You can sign up. We'll let, give you uh, other information about other things coming on the pipeline. But you'll also see a trailer for the movie as well. And um, I hope people jump on the board. It's a it's a fun movie, as I said. Awesome. Okay. Uh, has it released already in the U.S., did you say? Yes. Okay. Yep. So how are families responding? Are, are we buying tickets? Are we Great. streaming? I'm getting letters from, I'm getting through the site that people are standing up and cheering at the end of the movie. They're staying through the whole, the, the, all the, all the bloopers and everything. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they're loving the movie, which is, which is wonderful. It, it is, it is written by Dan Gordon, who is, uh, who is, who is Canadian Israeli. Um, been living in America for years, and Dan Gordon wrote wrote the script originally for um, for Paul Newman and Robert Redford, 
uh, over 30 wow. years ago. But those guys couldn't get together in a timing to do it. So it just sat around and Dan brought to me. But Dan Gordon, he was Oscar nominated. He wrote The Hurricane for Denzel Washington. He wrote Wider, Kevin Costner's movie. And he wrote 60 episodes of Highway to Heaven. He was a showrunner oh, on that TV wow. show. Michael Landon did, yeah. yeah. So great writer, great writer. I've got a couple more of his scripts that we're trying to raise money for right now. So if there's anybody out on, on, get out there that wants to invest in a movie, go to sorbostudios.com. we got good family movies. Awesome. Do you stream your stuff as well? Uh, yes, this will be, yeah, we will start streaming. Once it gets a run down there, I know we're looking at um, South Africa, England, um, New Zealand, and Australia as well. But we'll probably start streaming here pretty quickly in the next month. Mm -hmm. Okay, amazing. Uh, now, um, you guys homeschool your kids, or at least your wife does. So um, do you want to maybe briefly share why you think this can be helpful for families in today's culture? Well, I think COVID woke up a lot of families in America to realize how, because our, our public school system is horrible. I mean, it's horrible. I think we, at, at, as recently as five years ago, I know we ranked 27th in the world. That's pretty pathetic. For America, I think that's really it's really embarrassing. Uh, we graduate kids who can't read now. The state of Oregon now said that they can graduate students who can't read or write that they're okay with that. What does that say? I mean, it's unbelievable to me. We're dumbing down our kids. I mean, Ronald Reagan um, had some great quotes when he was president back in the '80s. And one of my favorite quotes is he said, "These are the biggest words to fear." Hi, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Because they're not here to help. They're, they're here to make your lives miserable. Everything the government runs in America is pretty pathetic. And um, during COVID, 2 million more families are now homeschooling because they finally woke up to look at public schools as not a great place to use as a babysitting service for their kids. Oh, wow. And uh, the indoctrination of their new kids, our universities are horrible. Even Bill Maher, as far left as Bill Maher is, he said, don't send your kids to American colleges. And he's not wrong. I mean, it's oh. just... It's ridiculous what 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 what's happened to our I think our under 30 group right now think that think communism is a good way to have government. And I'm going, well, maybe they should take a little history lesson and look at Russia and look at Vietnam and maybe North Korea. Maybe they should go visit those countries before they make that decision. Yeah, I know. We're running out of time here, but but Kevin, I, I know you experienced a bit of cancel culture in Hollywood, getting back to Hollywood here, because you kept being vocal about your sort of more conservative, more Christian worldview. So uh, did that make you want to quit and has it impacted your life at all? No, it made me want to keep I love the I love the industry. Hollywood owes me nothing. I find out I find it funny that they cast me just because I'm conservative because uh, uh, Hollywood was started in the conservatives. You look at the Warner Brothers, Warner Studios, that was all conservative. And then things changed really in the 60s when everything sort of changed in America and started sliding the other way. But um, I formed Sorbo Studios because I still like making movies. And I find it funny because Hollywood screams for tolerance. They scream for freedom of speech, but they're hypocrites. Just like Washington, D.C., these are hypocrites that everything's a one-way street with them. I don't harbor that anger towards somebody if they have an opposite point of view. To me, that's what freedom of speech is supposed to be about. But these guys put a blacklist on people because they don't like the fact that they post the truth. Hollywood is, uh, uh, you know, tr the truth to Hollywood is kryptonite. So uh, there I give a Superman term for that. But yeah. uh, it's pretty <laughs> And real quick, Kevin, I understand that you're going to be soon co-starring in a film called Reagan with Dennis Quaid. He's one of, he's one of my favorites. So what's that about? Um, it's Reagan's life. I mean, we're, 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 this actor strike is postponed. It was going to come out in January or February. Now they're going to postpone it till spring, which is too bad. But Quaid plays the president. I played his pastor. In it. And Dennis and I did a movie together about 10 years ago called Soul Surfer, which is another wonderful movie, The Life of Bethany Hamilton. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. I loved that movie. I'm the one who saved her life. I played Dennis Quaid's best friend, so I'm <laughs> oh I'm with him. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it again now. Yeah. <laughs> it's so a crazy. wonderful movie. We, hey, we shot two months in Hawaii, in Hawaii, so that didn't suck too exactly. much. And Dennis and, I, Dennis and I only work three days a week, so we're both golfers. So we golf the other four days. <laughs> did you get in much surfing, or did it kind of uh, steer you away? You know what? They gave me, I had two two. I had two weeks of lessons, but I'm telling you, you got to grow up with that. I got to a point oh, that I could. Stop. Hard. for maybe two or three seconds but that's not an easy sport to I do when, when you're older you got to grow up with that sport exactly they make it look so easy so easy. i know it's fun to watch though i can see why people get hooked definitely well kevin it's been so much fun to have you on today appreciate it so thank much. you all right go see the movie sorbostudios.com miracle in east texas okay miracle in east texas it premieres in canada this friday november the 3rd and here in lethbridge it will be playing at the movie mill i'll see you there